This is Professor Mane from Kelly Technological University. I welcome you to this presentation on Introduction to Atosar. What is Atosar? Is it a software? Is it a hardware? Or is it any tool? Or is it any specification? What is it? Atosar stands for Automotive Open System Architecture. So as the name itself suggests, it's an open system architecture for automotive software development. So it provides a standard for developing automotive applications. Atosar is a consortium formed by OEMs, suppliers, semiconductor vendors, tool, tool manufacturers and even universities have joined this consortium to get the benefit of Atosar. Atosar is trying to standardize the ECU software. So what is the motivation for Atosar? Why Atosar came into picture? What is the real motivation? Why Atosar Consortium wants to standardize the ECU software? Is it not really standardized? There are so many issues in place. Okay, about there are 70 issues in modern vehicles. Are they not standardized? What happened? Why Atosar came into existence? Okay, here are the few case studies. Before that, let us try what are the differences between non-standardized projects and industry projects. What I mean by non-standardized projects are projects which are done at the university level or at the students level and the projects that industry is doing. The basic difference, I think, first thing which comes to your mind is the repeatability, reliability, accuracy. And really, I'm not talking about the characteristics, whatever I just mentioned. I'm talking about something more than that. Okay, for example, if somebody working on temperature controller, okay, most often when non standardized project is implemented, they only concentrate on the application side. So application side in the sense they only write the application software. So what I mean by application software is for example I want to control the temperature. So if the temperature crosses 70 degrees centigrade then I want to switch on the fan. If it is less than 50 degrees I want to switch on the heater. Okay so this is application software which majorly you focus on. This is of application software that is written in many many languages it may be c or it may be python but when this application is built they are not worried about the hardware the communication software or some communication hardware or the any peripherals for example if the sensor se temperature sensor has gone bad so there is no software written to check whether the temperature is fine or not there is no software written to check whether the hardware is fine or not, whether the controller is fine or not, whether the actuators are fine or not. So that is monitoring software. So in the non-standardized projects, we don't actually look into the hardware monitorings. But whereas in industry project is very, very important to take care of the underlying hardware. It is not only just the application software. For example, if you take a look at the ABS, anti-lock braking system, which requires the only input that is uh, wheel speed sensor input. If the wheel speed sensor is bad, then you can't actually invoke the ABS action. Instead of, you know, uh, re re instead of releasing the brake, you may apply the brake or in instead of applying the brake, you may release the brake, which is very dangerous. That is the reason it is very important to monitor the hardware related to that software. Not only just that, even the this non standardized project doesn't follow any standards uh, coding standard for that matter they don't follow any standards and also they won't uh, have any software to inform the user that some functionality is not working for example diagnostic software if something is bad in the project some sensor is, uh, has gone bad then it, the user needs to be informed about that so the industry uh, projects involve all these software components or modules okay so every industry follows some standard 
सो देर आर एन नंबर अफ इंडस्ट्रीज फॉर एक्जाम्पल बॉश के पी आई टी कॉन्टिनेंटल डेल्फा तर एन नंबर अफ सप्लायर्स विच डेवलप इज्यूज ओके सो दे फॉलो सम स्टैंडर्ड अफकोर्स देर वॉज अ स्टैंडर्ड बिफोर आउट ऑफ सार बट एवरीबडी वेर फॉलोइंग देर ओन स्टैंडर्ड सो देर वॉज नो वन स्टैंडर्ड बिकॉज ऑफ विच ऑटो सार केम इन टू पिक्चर so which is trying to standardize this architecture standardize this software architecture for ecu development ecu specifically for ecu software development so it provides a standard software architecture for developing a e e applications especially for automotive applications okay another scenario i will tell you why this came into picture okay let us say for example we have uh, Uh, OEM X and uh, the n number of uh, supplier supplier one two and so on. So here you can see OEM X has some project with uh, supplier one. So for some reason, if that project is not going well and they want to ship to the supplier two, okay, this project is not going good and they want to uh, continue that project with supplier two with some modification. so when oem x goes to supplier 2 will it be possible for supplier 2 to, to add some new functionalities or make a changes to the project which uh, supplier 1 has done which is very 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 difficult because supplier 2 is not aware of what kind of hardware is used what kind of software is used what kind of standards are followed what kind of software is written what languages are used so it's impossible or very difficult for supplier to to do any modification for the existing project it is as good as new project for a supplier to so this is the problem that every oem and every suppliers also facing because suppliers cannot take the project which is done by another supplier oem cannot go from one supplier to another supplier for any modification or alteration so that is the reason so this was the problem faced by every oem and every supplier so that is the reason the oem suppliers came together and formed this consortium called atosar so as atosar it's a consortium formed by suppliers oems okay it is not uh, only for particular oem so almost all the oems are now uh, they are into the atosar consortium so imagine see competitors are coming together and they have formed the consortium so will it work yeah of course it will work and it has worked okay that is the reason atosar has a slogan cooperate on standards compute on implementation that means everybody has to cooperate in forming the standard and compute on implementation any applications they want they can develop but they have to follow this atosa standard okay that is the reason the slogan says compute on implementation cooperate on standard okay why atosa and what are the challenges you can see the the growing complexity of electrical and electronics nowadays the modern vehicles have got more than 70 issues okay there is a issue to control the uh, wiper there is a issue to control the uh, mirror there is a wherever you place a hand there is a issue more than 70 issues are placed okay so the electronics and electrical complexity is growing day by day and the quantity of software is exploding okay within the issue and outside the issue also the software quantity is exploding day by day there are different hardware platforms being used it is not uh, harmonized even the development process and data formats are different uh, from one oem to another oem one from one supplier to another supplier so these are the challenges uh, before the atosar what are the objectives of atosar yes atosar wants to reduce the development time how the development can reduce because of the atosa standard so if everybody is following the same standard then it's easy to reuse that same component it's if the there is a standard then it is easy to test okay if, if there is a standard then you can use the same development methods and tools so you don't have to buy another tool for testing 
the different issues okay so you can make use the same functionalities across different oems oems can go to different customers different suppliers so there is a so there definitely there is an improvement in the software quality because of there is a reuse there is a re significant reduction in the development time so for industry time is money if the time is re uh, is uh, reduced definitely there is a huge huge profit finally even the end customers also going to get benefit out of this because of the reuse so these are the objectives of autosar yes i did mention e complexity is growing there are more than 70 ecus in our modern vehicle the software is exploding you can have a look at this example this is the electronic uh, stability program ecu so it all started with just understeer and oversteer control it also has got abs it also has got traction control hill hold control hill descent control adaptive cruise control start stop electronic brake boost assist bead brake disc wiping so there are n number of functionalities being added in the same issue the only the only functionality which had was to understand and oversteer control but uh, apart from that there are n number of functionalities within the same issue the software is exploding within a issue okay standard soft standard architecture for managing all these things so different hardware platforms like microchip texa fujitsu si, motorola atmel so there are different hardware platforms are used different uh, uh, process methodology and uh, data formats for exchanging the information between the suppliers and oems so atosar is trying to address even the development methods and also the data formats